Movies are great, but they also lie sometimes. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things Titanic got factually right and wrong. For this list, we're looking at some of the most shocking, touching, and significant moments from James Cameron's Titanic, and seeing which ones hold up as fact and which ones are fiction. And before this list sets sail, you should know there are spoilers ahead. Number 10. The band played as the ship sank. True. It's one of the most dramatic and heroic moments in the entire movie, and it's been referenced and copied many times in cinema. All right, boys, like the captain said, nice and cheery so there's no panic. Well, it turns out that it actually happened. Survivors of the RMS Titanic have said that the ship's band, in an attempt to calm passengers, continued to play songs even when the ship was sinking and people were chaotically running around trying to board lifeboats. kept playing as long as they could, eventually going down with the ship. It's believed the last song the band played was Nearer My God to Thee. Gentlemen, it has been a privilege playing with you tonight. Number 9. Jack Dawson and Rose DeWitt Bucator. False. What's a good story without romance, huh? Well, nothing it would seem, according to James Cameron, as he completely made up the characters of Jack and Rose for added drama and intrigue. I can't do this. We're gonna have to get a little bit closer. This. The two lovebirds, divided by class, meet and fall head over heels while aboard the Titanic. Although their sacrifices for one another might echo events involving real people on board, Jack and Rose were fictional. <laughs> Where to, miss? To the stars. In fact, if you start to look at the evidence, like the fact that a third-class passenger casually walks into first-class dining, it becomes pretty obvious. Mind you, it turns out there was a Joseph Dawson on the ship but it was just a coincidence. I'm flying! Jack! Number 8. They used flashlights during their search for survivors. False. The scenes where crew members cascade their flashlights over bodies in the frozen ocean attempting to find survivors is a sight that sticks in the memory. Pause! Do you see any moving? No, sir. None moving, sir. But apparently, Flashlights were not used at all during the Titanic's search attempts. In fact, in 1912 when the ship sank, the flashlight had not long been invented and wasn't commonly used at the time. Is there anyone alive out there? Can anyone hear me? James Cameron has admitted that this was an inaccuracy he purposely let slip purely for convenience in the scene. There are a few other historically inaccurate items in the movie too, like Jack's modern day handcuffs. Listen, Rose. I trust you. Number 7. How the Iceberg Sank the Ship True Most people already know that an iceberg was responsible for sinking the Titanic, but the way in which it was depicted in the movie was actually incredibly accurate. Director James Cameron went to great lengths to study the wreck of the Titanic and the stories of its survivors. As a result, the calm before the collision, the collision itself, and the chaos that followed were all very realistic when compared to the real thing. Cameron and his team of movie makers were also able to accurately recreate the size and impact force of the iceberg, making the most important moments in the movie as believable as possible. 26 years of experience working against him. If figures anything big enough to sink the ship, they're going to see in time to turn. If the ship's too big with too small a rudder, it doesn't corner worth a damn. Number 6. The ship split in two. True. <laughs> the climax of 1997's Titanic is dramatic to say the least, with passengers clinging on for dear life as the ship's stern rises out of the water. It then breaks into two before sinking under the waves. If this is the direction the rats are going, that's good enough for me. Although the Titanic was originally thought to have gone down in one piece, studies of the wreckage showed that it actually split between the second and third funnels. This happened because one side of the ship filled with water due to the damage from the iceberg, causing the other side of the ship to lift out of the water and eventually break off due to the strain. I've got you. I won't let go. Come on, I've got you. 
five. Rescue by the RMS Carpathia. True. God almighty. When they realized they were in trouble, Titanic crew members fired flares and sent out SOS messages. Fuck me! As seen in the film, the RMS Carpathia responded and arrived at the scene within approximately four hours to aid in the rescue efforts. But omitted from the movie is the fact that another ship was much closer, the SS California, which didn't respond to the Titanic's distress calls. Pick up, you bastards! The radio operator had turned the ship's set off, and the captain decided to ignore the sinking ship's distress rockets. Official inquiries concluded that this resulted in greater loss of life, although the conclusion has been disputed. Cameron actually shot some of this for the film, but removed it to provide a, quote, clean cut. Iceberg, right ahead! Thank you. Number four, there were not enough lifeboats. True. In the movie, due to the limited number of lifeboats, passengers can be seen scurrying to climb aboard them in an attempt to escape the sinking Titanic. And this is accurate. Hold the left side! The Titanic had enough lifeboats to accommodate 1,178 people, which was about one-third of the ship's overall capacity. But shockingly, this figure actually exceeded the legal requirement. Lifeboats were expected to be used to ferry passengers from a sinking ship to a rescuing ship, meaning that lifeboats could be reused for multiple passengers. Of course, this wasn't the case with the Titanic. Why are the boats being launched half full? Not now, Mr. Andrews. There, look. 20 or so in a boat built for 65, and I saw one boat with only 12. 12! Another tragic fact is that due to the chaotic circumstances, many lifeboats were not filled to capacity, leaving seats empty. Now, fill these boats, Mr. Lightoller, for God's sake, man! Number three, Will Murdoch cracked under pressure. False. We have an understanding then, Mr. Murdoch. Movies need villains, and Titanic has a few, many of whom are fictional. But First Officer William Murdoch, who's seen angrily dismissing and shooting passengers before turning the gun on himself, is based on a real character. No will! But he was far from a villain. In fact, William Murdoch was hailed as a hero for his actions, helping fill a reported 10 lifeboats full of passengers before losing his life during the disaster. James Cameron has openly admitted that his screenwriter side took over when it came to depicting Murdoch's story. Well, at least he did still make the Titanic's Captain Smith a hero. There are conflicting reports, but some claim the captain went down with the ship, as seen in the film. Number two, an elderly couple refused to leave and died together. True. Now there's something you don't see every day. Many of Titanic's characters have no basis in reality. However, the elderly couple seen holding each other in bed as their room fills with water is based on the heartwarming story of a real couple, Isidore and Ida Strauss. In accordance with the women and children first motto, Ida was offered a seat on a lifeboat, but refused to leave her husband's side, as can be seen in a deleted scene from the movie. Women and children first. Yes. Yes, sir. Isidore was reportedly offered a place beside her, but wouldn't board before the women and children. As Ida's maid boarded a lifeboat, Ida gave her her fur coat to keep her warm. The couple was last seen together arm in arm on the ship's deck. And so they lived happily together for 300 years in the land of Tirnanog, land of eternal youth and beauty. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, there was class discrimination with the lifeboats. False. What are we doing, mommy? We're just waiting, dear. When they finish putting the first class people in the boats, they'll be starting with us and we'll want to be already, won't we? Although there were first, second, and third class facilities on board the RMS Titanic, and a wide variety of passengers with different occupations and status, there was no class discrimination when it came to loading passengers onto lifeboats. Once the severity of the situation hit, the priority of the crew was to get as many people as possible, regardless of wealth, off the ship and into lifeboats, starting with the women and children. Women and children only! Also, the scene where third-class passengers are locked below deck as a means to take care of them is absolute nonsense. For God's sake, man, there are women and children down here! Let us up so we can have a chance! 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.